This is Brad and Sean in the morning. And this is Release the Adventure, a podcast about going outside and exploring. And today, we're going to dive into something that's a little bit different. Oh, by the way, I'm Brad, and this is... And I'm Sean. And we usually talk about mountain biking, camping, any type of outdoor activity. But we're deciding that we want to try something a little different. And we want to talk about some amazing people um, that are doing amazing things for our environment, doing amazing things in their sports, just in general are trying to be humanitarians or experts in their fields. And today, we've decided to, as our first guest, who's not a guest here, I'd love if she'd come talk to us because she's a wonderful human, Um, Amy Vitali, which I don't know if her name is actually Italian, but it just felt right. So I decided to add that little (laughs) flair at the end. Um, But Amy Vitali, she is a photographer that started, I think like a lot of people start when it comes to photography, is it's not really to branch out and go, I'm going to be a National Geographic. I'm going to spend the next 40 years traveling and just taking pictures, which is the dream. Spoiler alert. I did. That's what she got, though. (laughs) That is what she got, which is... That that is what she's doing. (laughs) Which is so cool. Um, Because as a photographer myself, that's the dream. To just start taking pictures and be able to sell all my worldly possessions and just have two cameras and a backpack. And just go take pictures for the next ever. Two two cameras, might I add, that are worth an obscene amount of money. <laughs> oh, that is true. But I only need obscene amount of camera gear That's with fair. equal amount. I don't need a house. I don't need a car. Well, I'd love to live in a van and just go take pictures. But National Geographic pays pays for your hotels and stuff. You they know? do. It's all good. They do. <laughs> um, but I digress on my ownness. Let's go back to Amy. Um, she started out as a very shy, reserved individual. Um, and those are her words, not mine. Uh, And she just said that one day she picked up a camera and everything changed. It just felt natural. Um, and she had the opportunity to just push forward and do something that was able to bring her out of her shy world and into this super creative I don't even know because it just blows my mind when I'm reading the articles about her, listening to her interviews, and the way that she can tell a story by a picture or two, which most of the time it takes most photographers 20 to 30 to tell a story why it takes her one or two pictures and you completely see where her mind goes and what she's trying to teach you and what is her ness. I guess, for lack of better terms. Right. I would say once she picked up a camera, she found her, her calling, her life's passion, her life's work. She, you know, maybe, maybe everything wasn't 2020 focused in at that moment, but that was kind of this defining experience for her and everything from change for that moment. And fortunately, she was able to help the world and change so many lives around her during during that moment, that epiphany. For sure. So I guess let's talk a little bit about her career and kind of how she started. As of what I understand is she grew up in Florida. She really wasn't much of a photographer um, until a little bit later into her adulthood. But she looked up to a lot of different female photographers once she got into the game. Her whole push, I think, was to be able to tell a story while helping people. And it wasn't just about taking a picture and going, oh, that's pretty. Oh, I just took a great picture. It's what is my picture going to do to help the individuals in the photo or the situation that I'm taking a picture of? Right. This is one of those things where when I look at her photos, it's there's something that my eye immediately goes to. There's kind of a focal point, at least it, how I view images. But then as I look around more, I keep finding more and more things. You know, what is going on in the background? What is this person stepping in? What is this person carrying? 
you know, what's what, what's going on with, with their culture, how there's just so many different meanings that Amy's trying to express and show. A lot of times you can see these hardships that people are facing. It really just brings out these giant feelings and just all these emotions whether she's trying to convey you know sympathy empathy happiness whatever it may be but there's so much going on in her photos that she's able to convey it's it's all very inspiring at the end of, end of the day i 100 percent agree sean and just i have her instagram up right now because you know Every photographer's real game right now is Instagram. And not to go picture by picture with anybody, but you go through and you're kind of just scrolling through her photos and every single photo has that feeling where you're just like, well, that's amazing. Wait, what is this? Wait, what is this? And it puts you into this different world than then you can be able to be compassionate and have that feeling of helping them and wanting to help them and wanting to be involved with what's going on in this photo. Yeah, for sure. A lot of times for at least us in the United States, we hear about all these things that are going on, but it's just like, oh, well, that sucks. Anyways, back back on to my my life then. And we don't really put much thought past these issues that are going on outside of our social bubble in our in our wider social bubble yeah and when i'm looking at her photos it it gives me a moment to take a pause and think okay wait there's something much more going on here that either hasn't been expressed to me before in the current media or during my schooling I haven't known these things and it's it's a little bit sad for one that I don't know that so much of this stuff is going on and two it's also like a, a call to action and for those of you that are able to follow along with this podcast at home rather than in, in a car I'd recommend going on your Instagram and uh, checking this out as you're listening to the podcast so then you can really take take a gander and follow along with us because I'm going through her Instagram too and there's just so many wonderful photos and one of my favorites that's kind of towards the top right now is with the African man and he's in the background there's just this beautiful mountain range and then there's this sunset going on in the right middle background and I, I don't know that one that one really call it calls out to to me that's fair that's a really good photo and for anybody thinking about it her Instagram handle is at Amy Vitale, so A-M-I-V-I-T-A-L-E. So you guys should definitely check her out. And in her career, she's done a lot of different amazing things. At first, she was working for Adventure Magazine, and it was her, I guess, mission that they were sending her on was more about conflicts. It was more about trying to figure out what's going on with different events And she had the opportunity to go to China and take photos of a, the, okay, let me make sure I'm getting my facts right, of one of the first female pandas to give birth in captivity that were about to be released to the wild. So it was just a very crazy situation for her because she went in that way and then then, uh, National Geographic was like, okay, we got to call you in. (laughs) We're getting you to the big leagues. It's time. We see the, we see you now. And yeah, that, that Panda, uh, photo journalism story is really what blew up her career. It was a very, very inspiring, uh, photos and just the story that she wrote along with. It was just very inspiring. And yeah, it, 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 it made a huge impression on a lot of different people throughout the world. And then she ended up going back to China and back and forth for over three years to create a documentary and create several different small movies or small films and a bunch of different pictures about just what China's doing to help the panda population. Yeah, there's a lot of problems in China right now, but 
they are doing what they can to help out the pandas, and I, I think Amy's story was able to boost that even more to make sure that these pandas got the protections that they deserved and some more of the financial resources to where they're they're protected more. Absolutely. And I guess, Sean, it's time to talk about her nonprofit that she yeah, was definitely. she was part of when she was starting to become a little bit bigger and she had the opportunity to use her fandom, I guess for lack of better terms, to reach out to different people. And that is the ripple ripple effect images or ripple effect. Mm-hmm. And this organization blows my mind. I've never yeah. heard about it until we started doing research on Amy and I want to get involved. Mm-hmm. This is one of those amazing companies that they're doing some of the best work and yet they don't want any of the praise. And I, I think that just, just goes so far. And this is one of those, one of those companies that just deserve all of the best in the entire world. Brad, do you want to break down some of the accolades for ripple effect images? Well, I think we got to talk about some of the things they do and yeah, some of the amazing craziness. Um, so I'm going to list off real quick and then we'll dive into a couple of them. But food security, water and sanitation, health, education, energy, economic empowerment, and climate change. And all these are basically fo- focused on third world countries. And right. They're not focused on a continent either, which is probably one of my favorite things um, because that's where I struggle a lot on a lot of nonprofits. It's they're like, well, it's all about problems in blank. Well, it's not. Yes, there's problems there, no doubt. But there's problems all over the world. So let's focus on a widespread help, which is one reason I really enjoy them. And one that I think jumped out at me was water and sanitation. That's something that oh, yeah. most people, especially in the U.S., we don't think about. It is yeah. not on our radar ever to go, well, I need clean water. And we go turn right. on your tap and you drink the water. <laughs> and we don't think that the climate is going to affect the way that we have to survive. And a lot of different countries, and especially what they're pushing for right now, is looking at the way that climate change and population are creating droughts and different flooding that is affecting the way that water and sanitation happens across a bunch of different continents. Yeah, definitely. I talked a little bit about water and sanitation on episode four, a little bit talking about doing our part in United States and other Western countries, but it's one of those things where, like Brad said, you don't think about it, and when you don't have access to clean water, it is, it becomes a life and death struggle every single day, and it raises so many health problems, higher risks of different infections and diseases when you don't have access to clean water. It's, it's a complete life changer to have to, when, to where you can just turn on the tap and have 100% confidence that you're going to be drinking or bathing in clean water every single time. And this, man, it's it's just so huge going into the future because of everything that's going on with our climate. And I just, oh man, I'm just so excited that Ripple Effect Images and, and Amy are able to help out and provide a platform to try to raise up the awareness of how important water and sanitation is and you know you can you can find the importance of that in america Mm -hmm. if you all remember the flint water the flint michigan water crisis is guess what it's still going on still it's been like six or seven years yeah flint flint michigan still doesn't have access to clean water it's ah it's it's mind-blowing in the worst possible way and i i my my heart just goes out to all the people throughout the entire world that don't have access to clean water. Yeah, for sure. And what the big focus for Ripple Effect is, is that they're partnering with a lot of different programs that are on the ground 
to train and empower women to build and manage their own water systems with using renewable energy to be able to move that water. So it's not just walking miles and miles for clean water, but also getting these women to be more productive in their society to where it's not just their day involves walking down to the water and walking back. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's so much going on and, and I love, I love the empowerment of women making sure that they have a way to help their lives. And so that they know that they're, they're valued and that they are just as useful as anyone else in the entire world. Right. And I love that they're teaching them these skills about renewable energy and how to work on water sanitation and putting up solar panels and all these different things. I I think it's, it's super inspiring. hundred percent agree. It's just, they do amazing work. Still, if you guys ever want to check it out, ripple effect images.org. They're incredible. Um, They have a lot of different films that go along with each of these. Um, like with the water and sanitation, one that I enjoyed was a drink in the a drink in the desert, um, which was a wonderful film, um, explaining exactly what it is. I didn't catch the location for that, but it's incredible. It's really interesting the way that they're not being preachy, which I enjoy, um, and it's more of a this is what's going on and this is how it needs to be fixed. Yeah. For sure. It's it's one of those things where I, I really appreciate that they're able to just provide through their films and their photography just so much empathy and excitement to cause a cause a change and be be impactful throughout the entire world. And so there's you know, they've they've got so many different great, great films and resources right now. And it's really just something to check out. For sure. Well, I want to end with a story from Amy herself that just made me giggle and feel super heartwarming. Um, It was a really incredible thing when she went out to go do that panda shoot. Instead of just going out in normal clothes and taking those photos, their whole team dressed as trees. So they were in ghillie suits and they made sure they were close to trees and they were trying to blend in with the environment to show that respect to that female panda. And when she did that, one of the um, caretakers of the pandas walked up to her and said, you, you come with me. You're going to hold two baby pandas. And (laughs) hearing her voice with the excitement was amazing. And one of the funniest tidbits and cutest tidbits of the whole thing was he goes, you're better than Barack Obama. He only got to hold one. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's incredible. (laughs) I was like, you just moved up. You you are you on level with Barack. That is amazing. That's 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 good. Good company to 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 be with, I would say. So I just really enjoyed that story because it just showed her compassion. And that it wasn't about just taking a photo to take a photo. It was respecting her environment with herself and just being able to have that ebb and flow to be able to go, I want to take a picture of this beautiful panda, but I don't want to do it in a way that's going to be intrusive, going to be dangerous to her life. And it was just, it's one of those stories that's just super heartwarming and I have a huge smile on my face and it just makes me really happy. (laughs) Yeah, Brad, you should uh, you should go be her uh, I don't, her paid intern because uh, I don't know. I want to make sure you can you can still live. <laughs> oh, I don't and, I don't want uh, you to be a starving art, art artist, even though I know that's what it takes sometimes. So that's true. Yeah, I'd love <laughs> Amy if you listen to this ever, please. I'll even come out for one shoot, and you can tell me I'm trash, but I still just want to take a couple photos with you because you're incredible. <laughs> And even 10 seconds with her, I think I'd learn more than I could learn off anybody else. And yeah. Incredible, incredible woman. I, I think she's too too kind of a soul to tell you that you're trash. And I I don't think you're trash either, Brett. I think you take very nice fo- photos. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, no, I don't think she would. I think it would be a very much like, 
hey, ha- let's 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 try to fix this, and I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Have you thought about taking it this way? Have you thought about looking at? taking it this way or that way as i'm bawling because of her glory of how <laughs> amazing of a human she is right okay just to close out the pod our normal little stuff so we're gonna start doing this sort of rotation on tuesdays and fridays now tuesdays being our normal long form episodes the type of episodes that you guys are getting used to and then fridays it's gonna be like today's episode where we're highlighting some serious amazing people just like amy vitali so if you want to keep on the lookout for our stuff you can always follow and subscribe on whatever podcasting platform that you're listening to and of course that also if you do that you could send a screenshot to us at release the adv on twitter and you could be entered in to win a 20 dollars gift card on amazon so pretty sweet so yeah that's about it guys any closing thoughts, Brad? No, just thank you guys for being here. Thank you for Amy for giving us an opportunity to speak about you because you're just an incredible human. And I hope she's doing well with all this craziness going on. And I hope she just keeps being awesome. Mm-hmm. And we use her as a drive to be better, a drive yeah. to use the environment while saving and preserving the environment. Yeah. And if anybody knows somebody who knows somebody that knows Amy, uh, reach out to them. <laughs> yeah. It would be super great to have her on, onto the pod. That's That would be, that'd be super great. That would be super inspiring to speak with her. And I think it would be super inspiring for a lot of people to hear hear from her, her words and everything that's going on with her life right now and how she's handling all of the craziness that's going on and how she's able to help others out in the process. So. Exactly. Well, we're release the adventure. And I hope you guys get out, get some fresh air. Have a good one, everybody.